And good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, First United Methodist Church this second sad va- second sad- Sunday. My goodness, I can't speak. We're going to start that over again. I apologize. Um, but I do welcome you sincerely uh, this second Sunday of Advent to First United Methodist Church. Um, we have a couple of brief announcements before we begin, and then we will be able to uh, worship God together. Uh, the first is that um, we are going to have three services on Christmas Eve. You may have seen that. I'm just reminding everyone so you can plan. It will be here in the sanctuary for all three services at uh, 5, 6, 30, and 8. Um, and we're going to be doing blended services, so it'll be a mixture of different types of styles as we celebrate Christmas together. I am so excited. We get to have Christmas, y'all. After last year, oh, I'm so, I'm so thrilled. Um, so also, uh, speaking of Christmas, next Sunday at 4.30, if you want to get into the Christmas spirit this Advent, uh, our children will be having their pageant outside at 4.30. Uh, so I invite anyone who wants to be blessed by our kids as they do their pageant to come on and enjoy uh, all the, the blessings that they have to give us. Um, we also have, uh, if you notice in your pews, you will see that there are some lovely new blue hymnals which have been donated to the church so uh, as we are singing you may actually use them and sing along i'm very excited that we are getting back to a little more of a step of normalcy and so that is it for all of our announcements except for if anybody did not pick up one of these during the drive through uh, we have these advent study books from the uh, society of saint andrew and there are some at the front and the back of the church as you leave you may pick up one per family And so now that our announcements are finished, let us prepare our hearts for worship.
We light this candle as a symbol of God's love for us and our love for one another. For the Lord rejoices over us with gladness and renews us in God's love. God exalts us over us with singing and turns our shame to praise. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Let us stand and join our voices in singing our hymn of praise, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, on page 211 in your hymnal or on the screen.
Now please remain standing as we affirm our faith together as contained in the Old and New Hymnal, or Old and New Testaments. It will be found here on your bulletin this Advent season. We believe in Jesus Christ and his gospel, born to us all so long ago in Bethlehem of Judea. We believe in Jesus Christ, whose birth glorified Bethlehem, but for whom there was no room in the inn. We believe in Jesus Christ, whose guiding star brought together to his manger the humble shepherds and the wise men. We believe in Jesus Christ, who walked among the common people and who was welcomed by those with open minds and yearning hearts, whom the poor, the oppressed, the discouraged, the sick and afflicted welcomed and accepted as their Lord and Savior. We believe in Jesus Christ, whose life changed the course of history, over whom kings had no power, whose life humbled the proud, toppled the mighty, and elevated those of low degree. We believe in Jesus Christ, whose love changed human hearts for the better, and whose life proved that it is more important to serve than to be served. We believe in Jesus Christ, who is the Prince of Peace, whose spirit makes for justice and peace among all peoples everywhere. We believe that the Christmas spirit is the spirit that can change the world through the power of love, faith, and hope. A reading from Malachi 3, verses 1 through 4. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. May God add God's blessing to the reading of God's word. Hey, First Kids, I hope that each and every one of you are doing well this day. Wow, won't you look at this. There are only 20 days until Christmas. Are you ready for Christmas? You know, that's quite a question that we hear often these days, isn't it? What do people mean when they ask if you're ready for Christmas? You know, they might wonder what you need to do to be ready for Christmas. So what do you need to do to be ready for Christmas? But what I wonder is, are you ready for Christ? In our Bible lesson today, we hear the voice of John the Baptist crying out to the people, prepare the way for the Lord. Fill in the valleys and level all of the mountains and make the crooked roads straight and rough places smooth. Hmm. Do you think John the Baptist really wanted people to work on the roads? 
<laughs> well, you know, what John the Baptist really wanted was for the people to get ready for the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And he was telling people to get their hearts right and return to God. You know, no matter how good some people may think that they are, there are always some crooked ways and rough places in our lives. There are things such as dishonesty and selfishness and pride and jealousy and many more. And John wanted the people to make those crooked ways straight in preparation of Jesus' coming. So during this Christmas season, we too, friends, can prepare by looking at our hearts and preparing and to make those smooth places smooth and, and smooth out those rough places like dishonesty or jealousy or selfishness. And the good news is that God will help us. So let's ask God to do that right now. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Help us to be ready for you. Make our crooked ways straight and our rough places smooth. We love you and thank you so much for everything you do. In your name we pray. Amen. Until next time, take care. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. As we come to the Lord in prayer today, there's a lot on our hearts as we uh, look around this world. Our hearts are broken once again as we pray for the, the families, for the victims and friends of everyone uh, for the school in Oxford, Michigan. Uh, we pray for Jim Southern. Jim, if you're watching, we are praying for you. We love you um, as he is currently at home under hospice care. Uh, we pray for the family of, of Henley Gilmer and for Henley um, as she continues uh, her treatment for, for cancer. She's our, our three-year-old cancer patient, and uh, we are giving a lot of prayer right now for you. And we uh, pray for Bill Molman, who is currently um, at the hospital uh, receiving treatment. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of this season, we wait, preparing our hearts to be ready for your coming. But we do not wait with expectation, because you came down to us in the most unexpected way, in love, not as Caesar or conqueror, but a baby, born to walk humbly beside us, to walk with us, to suffer and to die for us, but to teach us to show us a better way. So as we wait for you in this season, let us not forget those lessons you taught us, lessons of love and forgiveness, lessons of kindness and mercy. Let our waiting not be sitting idly by, waiting for you to come again, but instead be in preparation of this earth to be ready for you to return. Lord, in your mercy. God, we wait, sometimes exhausted. Lord, we confess that sometimes we do not have the strength to do your will. We let people and politics, television and the internet, all this noise, even the preparations for Christmas, become so loud that we don't hear your voice. We grieve for the brokenness of this world. Our hearts break against the injustices that we face or that we allow others to face each and every day. We see pictures of hunger 
children who are sick, and hear again and again about the senseless, needless violence. And we grow numb to it, God. Move in us this day to shake us out of our complacency and to move us into action. God, it seems too big. Too big for any one of us to handle. So we ask for you to help us this day. Show each of us how we can be our own small force and part for good in this world. And let that spread until every heart is singing your name and sharing your love. Let it become a wave of love and mercy that cannot be contained. Lord, in your mercy. God, we wait and we hope. For those who are sick, work your healing miracles. Be with the Gilmers. They need a miracle this day. Be with Jim Southern so that he knows that you are there and that he finds the hope and the promise of resurrected life in you. Be with all those who mourn this day. This season may feel long, but it too shall change into a new life. In that hope, we give you our praise today. Lord, in your mercy. We wait, covered by your love. As today we lit this candle symbolizing your love, let us fully receive it today. Let your love transform us and complete us. Let it move in us and unite us. Let this radical love cause us to put ourselves aside and love you in return. A love so bright that it spills out into every single act that we do. From the smallest interaction with a stranger to the biggest crazy acts of love that confuse those who have not met you yet. Let us love like you love, a perfect love for this world that needs your love today. God, show us and teach us how to love like you. Amen. Now, as we come to this time in the service, we have an opportunity to give back to a God who shows us a radical and perfect love each and every day. This isn't a check check mark on a list or, or something that we have to do because we have to do it. This is a response that we get to do out of joy as we give back to God. Uh, you can do so by placing your offering in the plates as you leave. Uh, there's, you can donate online or you can mail your uh, offering into the church. So now let us now give back to God, God's tithes, and our offering.
have told us how even when you are dying just seems like we can do right look how we treated you by of the gospel. The gospel today is from Luke chapter 3 verses 1 through 6. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Aturia and Trachonitis, and Lysanias ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I'm starting to get in somewhat of a good Christmas spirit with good holiday cheer. Anybody with me? When we come in here and see the lights, the light of Christ in the Christmas tree, just going down uh, the street in Asheboro last night, wow, just feeling the spirit of Christmas. Pray that each of us has a wonderful Advent. Instead of being all stressed out like we talked about last week, right? We're going to focus on the promise of hope and love and joy and peace given to us this Advent. 
Instead of being all stressed out about all the things that we have to do, we're going to focus on Jesus Christ and the coming of Christ into the world, Christ among us. I am enjoying, though, all the Christmas festivities. The, the lights here in the sanctuary remind us that uh, the light of Christ comes to us in the darkness. So when you see the Christmas lights all lit up everywhere you go, remind yourself that that is a signal, a presence of Christ, that is a symbol of Christ being here in the darkness of the world. And all of this, hopefully, will make us feel good when we know that Christ's light continues to shine in the world. We feel good about this Advent season, having a good time, doing things together, eating too much, probably, uh, all those things that come with Christmas. And in the middle of this good feeling that we are having, comes this man this morning, this wild hair, crazy dressed man, John the Baptist, Baptist, who shows up this morning and disturbs our nice Advent feeling. Kind of like Aunt Bessie, who shows up with her dry dressing every year and expects us to rave over it and gets upset when we do not. Kind of like Cousin Ralph showing up and being in the bad mood, the bah humbug mood that he always is in. And, you know, uh, but especially at Christmas. So here comes John the Baptist shouting words of repentance, telling us to make the valleys smooth and the crooked paths right. He comes and knocks on our door this morning, reminding us that there are still some things not right in the world. There are still some things not right in our hearts. And John the Baptist comes today to tell us to set these things straight. That there are things that are not right in the world. That injustices and violence that happens among us is not right and is not like the world that God created it to be. John the Baptist comes to us today telling us that in the midst of the darkness to prepare our hearts for the new way. Many of you go to great preparations for Christmas, I know. Uh, my mom would iron the tablecloths. <laughs> Anybody ironed a tablecloth recently? I have to put my hand down. Uh, she would... For Christmas, she went all out. She loved the Christmas season. She would polish the silver. Anybody polished silver recently? Uh, my hand is down. Uh, she would set out their fine wedding china that we only used at Christmas. <laughs> She would get behind every piece of furniture in the house and she would uh, find every dust bunny that was trying to escape her capture. <laughs> she wrapped every Christmas present with great care and only for the children to just come in and rip it open, the grandchildren, she'd have the most beautiful bows on every package. She spent hours and hours in the kitchen making some of the best dishes ever served on the face of the earth, her coconut cake. Oh my goodness. She would have it in the refrigerator because I think I've heard that she would say you would have to put the coconut cake in the refrigerator and let it set. Something like that, I don't know, but we would go in and we would want to cut it and she would oh, get back. She would uh, work so hard uh, to make Christmas so wonderful, all of us. And she did all of this while preparing for many Christmas services as the organist of the church and preparing for the cantata and, and Holy Communion service and Christmas Eve while make, and also making sure her kids at her school that she taught all had something for Christmas. She went to great preparation and in hindsight I wonder how she did it all. She went to great preparation, as many of us do too. We prepare for our guests, for family and fam friends. We go to all these great extents, doing uh, all that we need to do to make sure that we have a blessed Christmas and Christmas full 
of great cheer. We prepare for our guests of family and friends in our homes, doing so with COVID precautions this year. But as Tim said earlier, oh, praise God that we can be together. With uh, coming together on Christmas Eve, we'll have those three, so we have three services, and we will gather together to welcome the newborn king. We'll prepare our homes so that others can come. And just as we do all of this preparation, we are called by John the Baptist to prepare our hearts as well. We are called by John the Baptist to open our hearts and to do all this cleaning, to do all these things that God calls us to do so that we can receive this promise of something new. We must examine our lives, turn and repent of the things that hold us back. There are things that hold us back from fully giving ourselves to God in all things and in all ways. But John the Baptist comes today telling us to repent, to put away those things, to make room in our hearts, to come to us because Jesus is coming into the world, but also into our hearts to make everything that we are and we do so about Christ who brings us the promise of something new, to make the world new, to make the world anew with God's love, hope, peace, and joy this Advent and Christmas, who bring God, Christ who brings the promise of something new to each of us, to make us new. We are called to repent today, and there may be things that we regret, that we are so ashamed of, that mistakes that we have done, maybe recently, maybe yesterday, or maybe 30, 40 years ago. And we continue to carry these things, and those things take up room in our heart instead of allowing Christ to take up that room. There are things that we have done, so when we think of those things, this morning let's take a moment and think about that the, when we, those things that hold us back, that the light of Christ still shines. That the light of Christ shines all around us, so that when we go into the darkness, we know that there's always the light, the things that weigh us down. Release them to God. Repent, says John the Baptist. Repent and make a new way, giving them over to God so that we can claim the promise of something new. As we come to the Lord's table this morning, we come with this promise that God is going to work in us, that God is going to do something greater than we can do on our own, that through the greatest gift of this season, a child born in a manger, we receive this great promise of letting go and being made new if only we repent, if we confess those things that hold us back, if we let go of the things that hold us back and make room for love this Christmas. John the Baptist comes this morning to remind us that when we come and receive this great gift that the world can be made new the rough places will be made plain the valleys will be made low the rough places will be smooth because the hope love peace and joy that only comes through the Christ child comes to us this day but as we prepare we must examine our hearts and repent. Repent, says John the Baptist, repent and make room for something new in the world. Make room for this promise, the promise of something new for the world and the promise of something new for you and me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I invite you now to stand and join me in the invitation, the confession, and the pardon. You may follow the responses on the screen or use your hymnals on page 12. Please stand.
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us confess and repent of our sins in silence. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their th thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things. Your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I invite you to take your communion elements that you received when you came in. If you did not receive them, you may just raise your hand and the ushers will bring it to you. Open up the top and take out the wafer. Hold it up. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. And now open the juice and hold it up. This is the blood of Christ given for you. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. We ask, God, that during this Advent season that you open our hearts to you, that you help us to see the things in our hearts that are not of you, and you take those things from us and replace it with your love. We thank you, God, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who comes to us in a manger, who died on a cross and rose for our sake. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit, seeing your light in the world and being your light for others, so that we may give ourselves for the world and for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Now if you'd stand and join our voices together in our hymn of response, Bread of the World, printed on page 624 or on your screen.
May we now go forth from this holy place as an awakened people, aware of the world's darkness, yet reaching for the light. May we go forth from this holy place and see God at work in our world and make all the difference in the world through love and hope and joy and peace. May we go forth in this new day, in this new way, receiving Christ, who will set us free from our sin and our bondage. May we go forth from this holy place, serving people, uh, sensing anew the pain that so many bear, yet confident that God will bring healing even through us. May we go forth as we open our hearts to receive the love of God, the peace of Christ, the communion of the Spirit, this day and forevermore. Amen. Angels call to shepherds, leave your flocks at rest. Journey forth to Bethlehem, find the child so blessed. See Thank you. 